Um, I would rephrase that a little bit. I think many patients with asthma have eosinophilic inflammation, and for the vast majority of those patients, um, their disease can be adequately controlled with inhaled corticosteroids. Um, but there is a subset of patients, probably about 5 to 10 percent of patients with asthma, um, in whom uh, inhaled corticosteroids, including high doses, are not adequate to control uh, eosinophilic inflammation in their airways. And so for these patients who have um, uncontrolled eosinophilic inflammation with standard therapy, many of them have uh, suboptimal outcomes of treatment with our standard therapies, including inhaled corticosteroids and other controller agents. And for those patients, they often end up um, taking oral corticosteroids frequently for exacerbations, or uh, quite a few of them, particularly in my practice, may become dependent on oral corticosteroids and be then subject to side effects. And so in the past, we've not had a lot of other good therapeutic options for those patients, and now we currently do have agents that can help reduce the frequency of their exacerbations or reduce their requirements on oral corticosteroids. In the presentation at this meeting, we're presenting our real-world um, outcomes of treatment with anti-IL-5 drugs in our clinical practice in our severe asthma program. Um, and we report data on 51 subjects um, who were treated primarily with mepolizumab um, and a subset of those who were then transitioned to reslizumab because of a suboptimal clinical response to mepolizumab. And so um, we observed in uh, approximately a quarter of our patients who were treated with mepolizumab did not have an adequate clinical response using very stringent criteria, with our criteria being um, either a 50% reduction in their dose of chronic oral corticosteroids or a reduction in their annualized exacerbation rate. Um, and so what we observed was that of uh, uh, the patients who transitioned from mepolizumab to reslizumab, uh, probably about three quarters of those patients um, responded then to the reslizumab. That's not a question we can easily answer from our data. Um, there's been a lot of discussion of this at various sessions in the meeting. Um, there are those who feel that this is an issue related to dose of drug, but I was just in a session that suggests otherwise um, with a presentation there by a group. Um, some people think that it's the route of delivery. Um, we can't exclude that there are differences in the molecules, and so we, we don't really know um, the answer to that at this time. I think that um, in an ideal world, we should have um, uh, direct comparisons of these agents in specific patient populations, that those are very difficult studies to do. I think we need to do ongoing mechanistic studies to better understand um, whether there are biological predictors of response, because in our, at least in our population, the only uh, predictor we found that suggested a lower likelihood of response to mepolizumab were patients who were on higher doses of oral corticosteroids chronically at the initiation of therapy. But apart from that, we really weren't able to identify either any demographic or typical clinical predictors of response. But I think it's a very interesting question if there are biological predictors of response, whether that's biomarkers or other characteristics of their um, airway inflammation that uh, dictate um, those responses.